Welcome for Boston, Texas, and Cloudflare Mix Cash Purchase. <laughs> So um, today I'm here to talk about something I'm super excited about and hopefully by the end of this talk you'll be super excited about it too. And that is WebAssembly and why it is the future of the web. And I'm not exaggerating. So I'm mixed Cassie and Ren. So my name changed last week when I got married to my bestest friend. Um, so my name is not Cassie Ren. The next title implies I am non-binary, I am a gender intersex, and not related to my gender, I'm autistic. I'm willing to talk about any of those things outside of, of you know, like, uh, like if you want to talk about that kind of stuff if, um, outside of the conference, just let me know. I'm happy to talk about it, but I'm also happy to talk about what was that As mentioned, I'm from Cloudflare. The TSA stole my Cloudflare t-shirt. <laughs> I don't know if I get back, it was the only t-shirt missing was my Cloudflare t-shirt. I'm like, that. And there's a note from the TSA saying, like, hey, you went through your bag. And I'm like, great. My employer's going to love that. <sighs> anyway, um, I also Twitch stream, which is why I chose to wear this shirt. I'm wearing my name badge. Come on, Cass. You can this. Anyways, I Twitch stream hardware and software under the name of Botanist twice a week, Wednesdays and Sundays. Um, so, yeah, I also do that. I also have two amazing and adorable cats. Oh, thank you! Okay, so now I have a really corny joke about Philadelphia before I really started. I walked out of my hotel room this morning and, like, light hit me from a mirror. And I thought to myself, is it always that sunny here in Philadelphia? <laughs> thank you. I'm here for the next three years. <laughs> That's not what you're here to hear about. Although the reaction is quite nice. You're here to hear about WebAssembly. And I find the best way to start explaining what WebAssembly is is by explaining what it isn't. So one thing that it isn't is just a programming language. In fact, it's, it's more of a compile target than a programming language. You can technically other languages to operate inside the browser. What? Like the browser is JavaScript land. Oh no, we'll talk about that in a bit. But most importantly, it's pretty literally magic, except it's not literally magic, it's literally code, but I'll explain that joke later. I promise. So WebAssembly as a compilation target. You write code in other languages and compile them into WebAssembly. Uh, some of the main languages are Rust, C and C++, Golang, C Sharp. Microsoft's been working really hard on the Blazor engine, which does C Sharp. Um, but just about any language you can think of, there is a WebAssembly compile target for that language. So if you think about it that way, that means you can write whatever language you want and it runs in the browser. But we're going to talk more about the implications of this and why it's super important. But the first question you have to ask yourself when you think about this is, what? Why? Why would you want to run anything other than JavaScript in the browser? And there's some pretty big answers. And yes, those are like my favorite pictures of Lori Boss. <laughs> uh, there are so many reasons you would want WebAssembly in your life. And one of the, one of the main ones that I can think of is, um, it's, it's a new era for the web, and, and that's a good reason because we need to think about how the web is going to continue growing. We need to think about what we're going to be coding five years from now, or two years from now, or one year from now, and not just what we're coding right now. And so the ability to use other languages in the browser and bring their specialties and their you know, uh, abilities and their developer experience into the browser is huge. So I'm saying this is a new era for the web. I'm not exaggerating, I'm not playing it up. And this brings a real shift in how we code for the web. And now you're like, eh, okay, Cass, all right, maybe. And it sounds like you just had a little too much coffee. It's way early in the morning. I'm not sold. But seriously, WebAssembly is comparable to bringing the power and, and <laughs> analogous to the JVM into the browser which is creating an evolution of the web as we know it. So we've now got this ability to bring in languages that we could never put in the browser before without installing uh, external applications. And that's one of the main things that I think about when I think, okay, how is this different from applets? How is this different from being able to bring in other technologies in the past? It's in the browser. It's built into the browser. WebAssembly is already in there. You don't have to have your users install something. You don't have to have your users enable something. WebAssembly is already sitting there ready to be used. And that, I think, is the biggest leap that we've had forward in terms of bringing external technologies into the browser. Is no installation, no external, oh, my firewall won't let me use this kind of thing. Uh, it's just fair. And I'm like, okay, starting to get it. It's still not quite there yet. 
Okay, so these are super artisanal diagrams of how the web used to work. I call this one ancient.png. Um, so you had the browser, and then had HTML, you had CSS, we had JavaScript. And JavaScript was there to autoplay MP3s on MySpace pages. <laughs> Thanks, JavaScript. And, and literally everything was over on the server, and you click a link, and it would turn a page, and you click a link, and it would turn a page, and on and on and on to return a page. And then we had Ajax. And then JavaScript became this legitimate browser application language. We got like this ability to fetch pieces of information from the server, uh, fetch other pieces of code, fetch pieces of data, fetch images, fetch whatever we like from the server without having to refresh the page. That was a huge deal. And that's how you know single page applications came into play. This is how basically any form of legitimate, uh, I keep saying that word, uh, any form of advanced JavaScript development for the for the web came about. And servers kind of evolved into more REST APIs for the most part with uh, some CSS, HTML, and JS file server. And so servers have evolved with browser applications on those. And so instead of request page, get page in perpetuity, you then have Ajax request result, Ajax result in perpetuity, or I tend to refresh the page again. So now we've got now.png. And I ran out of sparkly markers, which is why WebAssembly is like a like, super mega death red and black raw <laughs> color. Uh, so now the browser has HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Ajax, and service workers and WebAssembly. Uh, service workers can be a whole talk on their own if you haven't read up on them. They're definitely a huge part of what makes the new web the new web. I refuse to put a number on it. I'm not calling it Web 3.0. Because who remembers Web 2.0 and how much we were promised and how much it actually gave us and how we're still making jokes about that. So I'm not going to give it a number, all right? Anyway. <laughs> so now you've got request page, return page. And then you've got we have used WebAssembly to compute. And it doesn't go back to the server. The WebAssembly, again, is running in the browser, in its entirety. You get the WebAssembly code from the server, but it runs in the browser. And I'll go over this in my demo as well. Uh, you then use a service worker, a uh, third-party module, to go get another piece of code or another piece of functionality in an Ajax. And, and your service is all OK, because it's probably not even a server at this point. It's probably just a collection of serverless functions. So that's a whole other talk. Okay. Because now you're like, okay, I get it. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So we started, started to get, okay, Gary, thanks, Cass, but why do I care? What does this matter to me as a web developer in 2019? What does this technology that isn't going to affect me for the next two to five years going to do for me now? It matters because, first of all, it's not two to five years in the future. We'll go over that in a minute. But mostly, it matters because it augments JavaScript and it's not so strong code. Because I love JavaScript just as much as the next person, or more than the next person, depending on who the next person is. But there are some things JavaScript is not so great at, and I have to admit that. Just like me, it's not good at math. It's really not. It tries, just like me. It's not good at math. Another reason is, do you want to, who wants to rewrite a, who wants to rewrite curl for the web? Curl is an extremely well-written and unit-tested like, you know, library. No one, no one wants to rewrite that for the web, right? No one wants to rewrite these huge, really well-maintained code bases that just happen to not be in JavaScript for the web. So that's a huge benefit that WebAssembly gives us, is instead of having to rewrite these code bases, we can then wrap them in WebAssembly and say, okay, now I want you to work in the browser. And they go, okay, I'm gonna go work in the browser now. It's not having to rewrite them. Fewer calls to the server is less latency, which is faster web applications, which is something we all care about in this room, presumably, if you're here. If you don't, okay. <laughs> so when I say it's augmented JavaScript, it's not so strong points. Who wants to write a banking app in JavaScript? <laughs> yeah, I always get like one or two hands from people who are like, ah, I'm gonna raise my hand as a joke. But like, no, I don't either. <laughs> Uh, if you're writing anything that relies on mathematical, numerical accuracy or speed, that meant until now another Ajax call to another language to do all the math. With WebAssembly, we can do this in the browser with, say, Rust or C and C++ or uh, even there is a compiler for R. I don't know why you'd want to put R in the browser, but I'm sure someone thought of a really good reason and is going to tell me why after this talk. <laughs> Other not so strong points. Who's had a string equals zero come up to true? Yeah, who's been, who's been okay, fine. More generalized case. Who's been bit by double equals versus triple equals? Okay, quite a few more hands go up there, right? That's a huge problem with JavaScript. And yes, TypeScript, I know. TypeScript, I know. 
So I'm not bad for me if it's not like, but TypeScript, I'll be like, I know, and I even said it. So you weren't listening. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> the accidental concatenation that you need to add and vice versa, things like that, they're great when you're trying to prototype web apps quickly, but not so great when you need type accuracy or anything like that. Any of us who type in general, type of, or type of brackets array equals array is false. Great, that's, that's great, JavaScript, thank you, you tried. <laughs> WebAssembly, above all else, I used to give a lot of talks about this, means using the right tool for the job. There is a serious level of fanaticism in the developer community, and it's definitely still a problem, that creates kind of like this myopic vision for people where they're like, if I can't use my tool, then it's not worth doing. Or, if the converse, I'm going to use my tool, no matter how inconvenient it may make things for everybody else, uh, be it uh, JavaScript even, like as much as I love JavaScript, people can be like, okay, I want to use JavaScript for literally everything. I'm like, okay, but no, maybe not literally everything. Maybe most things, but not literally everything. Using WebAssembly means using the right tool for the job. And that's the most important thing for web developers at the end of the day. And that just doesn't, doesn't mean language. When I talked about rewriting entire applications for the web, why would we rewrite an entire application when we can wrap another application that's already unit tested, that's already open source and available to us, Put that in WebAssembly and then use that. Using the right tool for the job, meaning besides just language, libraries, uh, and, and abilities like that. Now, on your first reaction, if you're in love with JavaScript like I am, is, but this will kill JavaScript, oh no, run away, ah! Uh. How many times have we done that now? It was the song and dance where we're like, oh, it's gonna kill JavaScript, oh, TypeScript, oh, CopyScript, and this, that, and the other. Okay, I'm done, I'm done. It's not gonna kill JavaScript, all right? It's, with all the love in the world, I love to say that JavaScript is the cockroach of programming languages. <laughs> it isn't going anywhere. Right? I love this language possibly more than many, many people. And it is the cockroach of programming languages. It ain't going anywhere, right? For most situations, it makes JavaScript better by letting it do what it's good at, i.e. Uh, auto-playing MP3s. And <laughs> I shouldn't make that joke, I love this language. And letting you do what it's good at and ignoring the rest. Letting JavaScript kind of like outsource what it's not good at to other languages and other libraries. Really, really helpful. However, there is kind of an internal fight between browsers that I won't name, where certain browser teams do want to kill JavaScript and make WebAssembly the only thing, but there are JavaScript compilers for WebAssembly, because of course there are. So ha, you can kill JavaScript that way. But um, you should pay attention to the discourse that's going on around WebAssembly in general because there are some people who do want to say like, no, it's only WebAssembly and no more JavaScript. And then there are some who are like, no, it's an augmentation of JavaScript and we really should be paying attention to this discourse because it affects us as web developers even though we are not technical standards writers and we are not browser writers, we should make our voices heard to the browser writers and the technical standard writers so that they know what we want as web developers. Because they ostensibly are out to get our time and attention. Anyway, see me after you want to learn more about that particular fight. There are WebAssembly modules out there that can access the DOM and can be used to manipulate the Shadow DOM, which I always, always sounds like a cabal, like this like organization like the Shadow DOM. But uh, no, like it's an actual thing. And, but mainly, and this is what I find most important about WebAssembly, is it makes the web better by creating better browser experiences. Say that five times fast, like I forced myself to do in the mirror and we're going to stop here. <laughs> Makes the web better by creating better browser experiences. Which you have to mix up how So let's take a little bit of a closer look at how this works with the demo. Mirror displays. Go over here. Alright. So I always look goofy in photos, so I look goofy on my own standards. So that's me. And uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to rotate this imagery. Oh, you can <laughs> really? You're going to break now? Out of all oh, I know why this is. Hang on, I'm in the wrong folder. Code. Live coding. It's the best. Did you see? I, I know this seems like a bit, but no, I'm actually just in the wrong folder and I'm fixing this now. That's a, that's a great way to say the thing to yourself, isn't it? Where was that last time this worked? At least I'm running early, so it's really not that big of a deal. Here, go back here, go back 
here. This is me here. Okay, there we go. This is sweet. All right. Image magic 
uh, manipulates images in the browser, I say up to 10 times because I got well actually. It's more like 100 times faster than JavaScript could do if JavaScript can't even do those manipulations, which some of them can't. And it shows the real power of not having to rewrite code and being able to let us use the right tool for the job. As I mentioned, um, why would I want to write that in JavaScript? I love JavaScript, why would I want to write that in JavaScript? I wouldn't, right? I would much rather just say, hey, image manager, come do this stuff for me. And it's like, Ooh. the only downside is image magic is five minutes. But if you're writing a photo editor for the browser and you're expecting your users to come back again and again, one five, five megabyte download isn't bad compared to, hey, let's write a whole photo editor of JavaScript. Plus, you can, if, if, you're, if you want to get the nitty gritty of it, you can pare down the actual C code into a smaller container so that it's compiled on the web assembly and be less than 5 max. Uh, people have worked on doing this. But what about Node.js? Yes, you might be asking. And then you say, wait, well, what about Node.js? This is browser. This is browser land. You just said, you've been saying browser, 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 browser. Well, what, what about Node.js? Native hacking modules. I love them, you love them, we all gotta deal with them. Native modules. Who here has had an ostensibly weird compiler error due to native modules on a random platform? Raise your hand, all of you, because all of you have experiences in what we're not going to do. Alright, we have all approached this problem because we've all used Node and we've all used native modules. Uh, be it for the file system, be it for whatever, that we've all come across an esoteric and or weird native compiler due to native modules. Why are native modules such a pain to pass? Well, part of it is they have to be compiled and downloaded for the architecture you're installing them on. So if you're on a Raspberry Pi Model 1, that's ARMv6. And we're currently having a big old argument about whether ARMv6 should be supported by Node in the first place. So that's fun. And yeah, it's, it's, so you have to download and, and install the architecture you're installing on. Works on my machine, says the CICD for Node. Does it work on my machine, says the user running on a Raspberry Pi 1. So they either have to recompile on every platform or leave the platform off from support. So if you're on a random platform that this library doesn't exactly support, it just say, nope, can't compile, sorry, nope, can't do it. Um, Node.jip has some of the weirdest error messages I've ever seen in my entire life. Now, to be fair, I respect the heck out of their work. I really do. The, the Node.jip people have a really, really, really tough job. And I really respect what they do, but maybe it's time to use the right tool for the job. WebAssembly works on node greater than eight. Node greater than eight is everything that's at an LTS or higher. In fact, anything below or at eight is out in retirement plan. That doesn't mean people won't use it, although you're wrong, I'm not my need. But anyway, so this is the map here. I don't know the map. Anyway, node eight, native module, compiled, non-platform specific. <gasps> Just in case you didn't catch up with me. <laughs> WebAssembly modules are Node.js. They are pre-compiled binaries because WebAssembly is pre-compiled not by platform but by WebAssembly in a general sense. So no matter what platform you're running on, if your platform supports WebAssembly, as Node does, it can be used and pre-sent to any platform that runs Node and be used without having to recompile. No more recompilation on every download on every architecture. For reals. Like I tried this, I need to get the demos up, but I tried this. I can actually compile, I compiled a WebAssembly module on my Raspberry Pi 3, and I moved it to my Mac. It didn't recompile, and it worked. What? That's huge. So this is a quote from Lori Voss. This is more than a few weeks ago now. Uh, everyone wants to deprecate your GIF, and WebAssembly would eventually allow us to do this. The brackets are gonna replace like paragraphs. Not to like misquote, I promise. They're really just because he got really excited about it. So it was the paragraphs and stuff inside those deprecate and eventually, but it did boil down to deprecate and So now that we've talked about Node, and I'm realizing that background is not the best choice, WebAssembly is even invading serverless. So I work for Cloudflare. This is where I do my. So my employer enjoys that I'm here. Um, so Cloudflare Workers is a serverless platform, and we run on the V8 engine instead of a container-based situation, so if you want to talk to me about no cold starts. Um, other than that, uh, we use the V8 engine, so we support JavaScript and we support WebAssembly. So WebAssembly is innovating the world of uh, serverless. If you're interested in that, uh, I'll show this QR code again later, but it will get you access to our free tier, which is 23 functions and 100,000 calls a day. So you can quite build quite a robust serverless app with that. And you can also learn WebAssembly by playing around with WebAssembly in a serverless environment. 
and I'll show this again later. And so how do we get to this magical land? Well, first of all, I mentioned earlier that like, why are we worried about a technology that's two to five years in the future, right? A lot of you are probably thinking, oh, you can only use this in Chrome, right? Or oh, you can only use this in, in uh, very edge browsers. Android 5 has support for WebAssembly. Android 5. 94.78% uh, browser saturation is according to can I use. You could be using this today in your production applications. Unless you're supporting like Android 4, and then I'm sorry. Uh, you can be supporting this today, you should be supporting this today. Because again, using the right tool for the job and creating browser experiences that will move the web forward by using the right tools for the job and being better for your users. If you'd like to learn Rust, which I suggest if you if you want to learn a new language, like you only know JavaScript, and you're like, gee, I'd like to learn a new language to learn assembly, I would suggest Rust. Because as someone who's learned many, many programming languages, every time I learn something new in Rust, I think, oh, that was really well thought out. And even if I don't agree with every decision Rust made, I'm like, okay, I can see where they're coming from, and this makes a lot of sense. So if you're looking to learn a new language, um, the Rust book and the Rust Blossom book are really good, and they're free. They're available online on GitHub. Um, if you'd like to use C or C++, I would check out in M Scripten, M Scripten, not M Scripten. Uh, as apparently, I don't enunciate enough. And if you're a C-sharp fan, I would check out Blazor, B-L-A-Z-O-R. Uh, that is Microsoft's C-sharp WebAssembly compiler, and it's pretty fast and pretty, pretty dang awesome. Um, if you told me I'd be up here five years ago, and said, hey, Cass, you'll be up there talking about how cool Microsoft is with open source. I would have laughed at you. <laughs> but hey, here we are. <laughs> so the point of this talk. Try WebAssembly. I personally like Rust, but the point of WebAssembly is using the right tool for the job and for you. That means whatever developer experience you find best. If you already know C Sharp, then do it. Do that. WebAssembly is the future of JS in all of its forms and the future of the web as a whole. I hope I've convinced you of that without having to provide more excuses and do more song and dance. And then uh, if you're a hiring manager, I want you to hire someone who is different from you. All right? I know it's kind of a left turn from this talk, but I don't care because I'm up here with the microphone, so <laughs> uh, If you are a hiring manager, I want you to hire someone different from you. They can look different from you, they can have different beliefs from you, they can be different gender from you, or not have a gender, or whatever. Just hire someone different from you. Just go out and do it. Now, this is the most common point I hear. But no one's applying, and it's hard, and they don't usually take that tone as far as they're concerned, but what I hear is that tone. And I refer them to Mr. Shia LaBeouf. Just do it! Just go hire someone different from you! Alright, and go try WebAssembly! He totally said that in the video, go watch it. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Uh, before I, I talk about like, where you can get the slides and stuff, I want to have a quote from Carl Sagan. I truly believe he was ahead of his time, and his, a lot of what he said is relevant today, and this is one of those quotes. All inquiries carry some element of risk. There's no guarantee that the universe will conform to our predispositions. But I do not see how we can deal with the universe, both the outside and the inside universe, without studying it. The best way to avoid abuses for the populace in general to be, is for the populace in general to be scientifically literate, to understand the implications of such investigations. In exchange for freedom of inquiry, scientists are obliged to explain their work. If science is considered a closed priesthood, too difficult and arcane for the average person to understand, the dangers of abuse are greater. But if science is a topic of greater interest and concern, if both its delights and its social consequences are discussed regularly and competently in the schools, the press, and at the dinner table, we have greatly improved our prospects for learning how the world really is and improving both it and us. And computer science is the science. Uh, anyway. I'm Cassie Wren. I can be contacted at kas at cloudflare.com. I am node botanist on Twitter, GitHub, everywhere. Uh, I like to do JavaScript with robots. Um, you can talk to me about that later as well. Uh, and then you can get the slides and the demo, and I'll fix the demo so it's the working demo uh, right after I get off the stage at GitHub slash node botanist slash node JS slash 2019. You now have an extra 10 minutes to go to your next session, be it here or anywhere else. And uh, very much appreciate your time. Thank you all so much.